Hello and welcome to part five of the Women in Concierge Medicine podcast, brought to you by Special Docs Consultants. I'm Terry Bauer, CEO of Special Docs. We've gathered five leading female concierge physicians for a panel discussion on why the concierge model has proven to be an ideal fit for them, from practice style to work-life balance. Many of the topics we discuss will resonate with any physician, male or female, considering a change to concierge medicine. You can find the entire series on the News and Insights page of our website, specialdocs.com, or on any of the Special Docs social media pages. What you're about to hear is part five of the podcast, where the doctors discuss the gender balance of their patient panels and the reasons behind why those patients chose their practice. Thank you for watching. So in the spirit of full disclosure, uh, I've had a concierge physician for the last 10 years, and uh, my physician is a female physician. And uh, she's terrific, and I enjoy uh, everything you've talked about as far as the time she spends with me and so forth. And I'm curious, uh, for all of you who are um, female physicians, when you think about your patient panel, do you have more men? Do you have more women? Do you find them to be older, younger? You know, talk a little bit about your patient panels and, and what the demographics are of those patients. And is it affected by you being a woman? I would say that my practice is probably 45% male and the rest female. I see the majority of my patients are who come in to visit me are between the ages of 45 and 80. And um, I, it started out when I, I was the only female in a big group of a male uh, dominated um, a medical group. And I was the first female. So I ended up getting everybody's wives. And then all of a sudden I started getting their spouses switched over to me or their children or their parents. And when I launched my pro, uh, concierge practice, I actually have a very even practice as far as gender. Judy, would you like to go next? So my practice is primarily female. Um, and uh, I've, I've had several males um, ask to join my practice. And I just feel that I've, I've probably had 10% males at this point. I, I feel that as time has evolved, and again, it's beyond, I'm in a practice with other men, that I felt that my specialty was taking care of women. And so women typically gravitated towards me. Um, I have, what I love is that I have three gen, often three generations. So I have the, I have the teenagers with the 20 year olds. I have their 40 to 50 year old parents or mom. And then I have grandma. Um, and, uh, and I truly enjoy that situation where I have all the women in my, in my practice. So I've had some men ask to join and I said, I I'll take them, but I tell them it's not my area of expertise. So, um, but it is fun to, to mix things up a little bit. Anybody else care to comment on the demographics of your practice? Yes, Nant. I think my demographics are pretty similar to Monica's practice. I have about probably between 40 and 45% men. So it's, it's, which is interesting because I'll have men call up and they'll want to call and make sure that I take men for in my practice. So, and we, we welcome them because, um, but pretty, pretty evenly mixed. Um, and always has been. So I would say that my practice is more female than male. It might be 40 to 45 uh, male, or even a slight bit less than that. Since I started practice 20 years ago, I, I was one of the only female physicians in the area. I think there were a couple of us. And, and so I filled up pretty quickly. Uh, and then along the way, uh, the husbands come, guys call, do you see guys? I was like, sure. You know, and then some of them would say, you know, hey, doctor, after a while, I, I really like you. I wasn't sure if I'd like a female physician. And that's okay. That doesn't hurt my feelings. And I'm delighted that they do. I'm delighted that they feel comfortable. I think that the women naturally are going to feel more comfortable so talking about certain things that guys might not talk to women physicians about. They want to go to their guy doctor. And that's okay. But I think a lot of gentlemen get that being able to talk to a physician who takes the time to listen, if, if that in fact is true that female physicians might be more likely to, to spend more time listening or spend more time, I think the guys get that that's a great way to get care. So um, several decades ago, it was a, you know mostly boy docs, and, and it's not like that anymore. So I get that um, the times are changing, generations are changing, uh, but I see lots and lots of couples, but I also see women who drive the healthcare decisions. They come to see me, 
and then they're like, you know, my husband needs a good doctor. I'd like to bring him to see you as well. Uh, so the, you know, the wife joining often is how the gentleman gets to the practice or, or another family, you know, who refer, member who refers them. But I have no problem with the fact that I have, you know, probably more women than men, but it's not ever been something I've sought out or gravitated towards. Uh, people choose me. Uh, I'm more than happy to take care of men, more than happy to take care of women. And, and I feel equally comfortable. Um, I, I think it's the patient's comfort level with who they're seeing. And as long as they appreciate my care and, and personality, I'm, I'm fine with that. But, but it is interesting. Definitely a little more women. Some guys will say, you know, I, I only see women in your waiting room and that just a particular day. Uh, but, uh, but for sure, I've, I've noticed that since day one. So. And Natasha, would you like to wrap this up for us, this section? Uh, I think my practice similarly is slightly more women than men, but, but close to even. Um, I've, I inherited a lot of patients from a male doctor who retired, and many of those patients had seen the man doctor for 30 years, and I was certainly the first woman doctor they had ever had, uh, and some of them were, you know, visibly unclear, unsure how that was going to go, uh, and they seemed to have stuck around. Uh, recently, I had a person come in for a, a meet and greet appointment and said he only would want to see a woman doctor. Hmm. And um, I was reflecting on that and some of my other male patients, and I wonder if they feel more comfortable opening up about difficult subjects to a woman. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe, maybe it's, for some people, a little bit more comfortable of an emotional space to be speaking with a woman. Um, and the other thing I would, uh, I'm noticing recently is this year, I have lots and lots of word of mouth referrals from other women and they're sending in their women neighbors. And I think first I probably get those word of mouth referrals from other women. And I think that just might be because women are the ones who are talking to a lot of people about their health care. Um, maybe they're just more chatty about those kinds of things with other women. So I feel I, I may see my practice change in its gender um, fraction as I go along if I tend to get more referrals from women who are referring their girlfriends. That concludes part five of the Women in Concierge Medicine podcast. You can find the entire series on the News and Insights page of our website, specialdocs.com, or on any of the Special Docs social media pages. Thank you for watching.